I am your host of Across Generations, Tiffany D. Cross, and this is the only place where you will hear three different perspectives from three distinct generations of Black women, and I'm so thrilled to invite you to this conversation. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Across Generations. I'm your host, Tiffany Cross, and I have a question. To be or not to be a mom? That was the question we asked earlier in part of the season. And boy, did a lot of you have a lot of thoughts about it. So according to the Science from American Time Use Survey, ADDIS, um, unmarried and childless women are the happiest subgroup in the population, and they're more likely to live longer than their married and childbearing peers. Now, I can think of a few reasons why. But meanwhile, men showed more health benefits from tying the knot than being family men as they took fewer risk. Which makes me wonder, if men benefit from the institution and women pay a cost, I wonder why these men are often out here trying to stay single so long and women are eager to marry. But anyway, that might be a show for another day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stick to motherhood. So according to Pew Research, nearly one in five women in America ends her childbearing years without having born a child. Now that's compared with one in 10 in the 1970s. So these numbers are changing across generations. Now by race and ethnic groups, white women are actually most likely likely to not have born a child. But over the past decade, childless rates have risen more rapidly for all women. In 2020, about 44% of Black women were childless in the United States. Now, I've talked about my own choices, uh, but given that certain thoughtless, morally corrupt, half-witted, racist, misogynist parading as vice presidential candidates masking their own MAGA cult sycophant status with their Mm -hmm. catless lady comments, I thought it might be a good time to revisit the motherhood conversation. So let's do that. Joining me now is Sandy Johnson, Miss Sandy. She's a 70-year-old successful realtor and consultant. She made a conscious decision to forego motherhood, remaining firm in her choice even during marriage. So to this day, she is confident and content with her decision to remain childless. On the other side, we have Mayor Jasmine Cobble. She is a dynamic millennial with a thriving professional career. She holds the esteemed position of being the mayor of the best city on the planet. (laughs) Alongside her leadership, she embraces her role as a devoted wife and mother and wouldn't trade the opportunity to find balance between her personal and professional life for anything. So Mayor Cobble, I need to know what's the best city on the planet. The city of Stonecrest. Stonecrest, <laughs> Georgia, which is where we are where today. We are. we are filming in Stonecrest, Georgia. So thank you for allowing us to shoot here Absolutely. in your city. Uh, we're your guests, so we're honored to be here. Uh, I'm very happy to have you uh, as guests. Miss Sandy, I do want to start with you okay. because I want to tell y'all both, <laughs> when we first did this episode, um, we had our, our elder was loving being a mother and our younger was like, no, 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 F them kids. You know, it was yeah. like resolute. She did not want to be a mother. So we have this reverse now yeah. where you um, were resolute in your decision to not have kids. Are you still married? No. Okay. Did yeah. you get divorced or, or? Divorced. Okay. Didn't have anything to do with the childbearing. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. How long have you been divorced? Uh, very long. Time. Okay. Well, yeah. how long were you married? Might be a better six question. years. Okay. And some people shouldn't be married. I decided I was one of those people. Okay. Yeah. So you're like I'm marriage and a, kids yep, is a no for, for a you. Husband. Right. Did you at at any point in your life want kids? Yes. You did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Talk I mean, to me about that. That was the the norm growing up. You mm-hmm. know, you're a little girl. You play with dolls. You you know, you make babies. You do whatever. You get married. You have kids. That's what you do. Except that didn't work for me because I wanted a career. And I didn't want to have to figure out that balance. You know, I ran into Mayor Cobble a few weeks back. It was her son's birthday weekend, and she had, I don't know how many 10-year-old boys at her house. And she's trying to do stuff, and see, no, testimony to why my... Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> My decision was a good one. But talk me through, like, you were a kid playing with dolls, and then as a woman, you didn't want kids. When did that transition happen, and why? There were several contributing factors. Um, I call them signs, mm-hmm. right? So I struggled with arthritis. Mm-hmm. Uh, teen, early 20s, um, I was told that a pregnancy could accentuate that, make it worse. Um I started working and was very energetic in the corporate world. 
Um, so that was another factor. Uh, my ex-husband, now deceased, um, said, you know, you're really too young. Let's wait on, you know, making babies. So there were lots of factors that kept rolling in that said, you know, maybe it's not for you. And I always said in the back of my mind, well, you know, I can always adopt, mm -hmm. you know, children who look like us, you know, don't get adopted right. uh, in quite the same way. Um, but then career just really took over. Um, and you pour yourself into that and that becomes your baby. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you don't have to worry about, I can't tell you how many positions I've left without another opportunity in the wings that I wouldn't have left if I had to worry about children. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's so, yeah, decision making was impacted along the way um, by um, that decision. Yeah, I certainly that understand do. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, Mayor Cobble, you are a busy woman, an elected official, um, obviously a distinguished career uh, and juggling motherhood. How many kids do you have? Just one. <laughs> Just one. So do you want more? No. No, so just one. Okay, what's the best thing about being a mom? Oh, man, uh, my son um, has taught me uh, that love has no boundaries. You know, mm -hmm. how this doesn't matter how mad they make you. You can't find the limit to how much you'll continue to give. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have no control over it. Mm -hmm. It just totally consumes you. How old is he? He just turned 13. Oh, a teenager. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. We're, we're knee deep in it, too. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a different dynamic, though, with teenage boys and moms, you know, because yeah. I think I know when I was a teenager, my mom and I were like, eh, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, for yeah, sure. For yeah. Sure. yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different than my mom and I when I was a teenager. Um, I thought it would be easier because he was a boy child mm -hmm. but we are doing things that are certainly <laughs> 13 year old teenage type and it has been an experience so really? far it's only been about a month since he's been a teenager but <laughs> yeah it's, it's an experience okay sure. well you told us like some of the sweet cute lovely parts what's the most challenging part about being a mom oh man um probably trying to determine uh if you are teaching the lessons that you want them to have um, and giving them the space to show you if they've gotten it, comprehended it, or understand it. Mm -hmm. right? Even simple things. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, maybe a year or two ago, uh, my husband and I were just kind of just talking about random things. And uh, I said, um, what if we're not teaching, Mason is his name, my son, what if we're not teaching him like the basics like, does he know how to use the washing machine? You know? Like, yeah, like, legit. Have we? You know what I mean? Because yeah. in the routine of everything, you're just like, go get your clothes, you mm -hmm. throw them in. And I was like, but does he know the different cycles? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, does he know what, how do you, do you wash white clothes in, in yeah. hot water or cold water? You know, yeah. like, because life just moves, yeah. right? I mean, he just knows the clothes are clean, but did we teach him detergent and bleach? Yes, for white. Yes, you know I mean? yes. like, so it's trying to like balance. Did we teach him that and then give him the opportunity to show it? Right? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's been, that is really the most terrifying part for me mm -hmm. is have I taught him the basic lessons? You know, we're always trying to make sure he's going to be a good person in the world. You know, don't steal, don't rob, you know, don't curse. Um, and just, you know, the pressures of being a teenager and so we're always constantly doing that. And of course, because I'm a civil servant, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, here's what you can't do, right? You're not allowed to yeah. cut up, you know, you've got to turn the other way. But have we taught them just basic things? Yeah. You know, running the dishwasher, you know, yeah. having to rinse the dishes really good before you put them in the dishwasher, you know, just so that those have been the things that are a little bit terrifying to me. Like once he gets out in the world, will he know the basics? Because we spend so much time focusing on just being a good civilian yeah but what about the small things you know listening to you talk i have to say this is the difference between millennial moms right and how i grew up <laughs> because at 13 i damn well better had no right. how to wash clothes because who else was washing them oh, you them? Well, doing the dishes clothes. right who <laughs> else doing these dishes right. like yeah you yeah. better know how to bust wait a minute you are the dishwasher right there was no dishwasher <laughs> like you, you had to bust the side and i mean i did too yeah. i remember and we were having this conversation, like, does he know how to iron? Mm. 
And yeah. I was like, has he ironed? You know, yeah. I mean, we're just thinking like. But there's something what? about that. I think like moms now, like it is this over, you know, they say it's like helicopter parenting. Mm-hmm. Um, and for somebody who ain't got no kids, I'm about to have all the opinions about how moms raising their kids. But like, I hire these people, you yeah. know, and it's like, oh, like you were raised different because yeah. it, it is a different, um, it, it's, it's a different reality yeah. for these young kids. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I was cooking on a hot stove, could barely see over it, had a little spatula like mm-hmm. this, yep. making fried bologna sandwiches. And remember, it used to bubble up yep. and like grilled cheese. Yeah. That was just a part of life. And so, at 13, it is kind of baffling to say, oh, wow, like, he don't, he don't wash his own clothes, he don't mm-hmm. iron his own clothes. He don't... Right. And I don't know if that was better for us as Gen X kids, you know? Well, but, you know, I, I think about my childhood in that respect. I didn't wash clothes. Mm-hmm. I didn't cook. My grandmother was there. Mm. I mean, our clothes were clean, folded, and in the drawer or hanging up, you know. She must have gotten up at, before daybreak yeah you know because i never actually saw her doing laundry right? yeah yeah <laughs> they were just miraculously done yeah but we had multi-generational households right 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 and everybody would live close by if they didn't live in the same household they lived in the next block or you know a walking distance away yeah so, yeah a, a lot's different and you know uh, your son's wearing no iron shirts, so he doesn't have to wear of <laughs> iron. I mean, that, <laughs> right? that's a great point. Yeah. I mean, they wear things now that are supposed to look like that. Yeah. Right. right. Where and even, we didn't. We wanted no. it to be clean. Right, you know, Chris. Yeah. Exactly. You know, With yeah. a crease in the Absolutely. jeans. Right. Yeah. Right. So they look new. Yeah. So they say, crease in your jeans. Miss Sandy, that's old. <laughs> <laughs> but Miss Sandy, you make a good point too because um, at my grandmother's house, I definitely never walked. We weren't allowed to touch no. the washroom. Right? We weren't allowed to touch right. the stove. Right. Like it was her kitchen, right. her you know basement mm-hmm. where the washer and dryer was. So that's true. And I think it is something about multi-generational homes, Mm -hmm. which uh, disproportionately today even are occupied by black folks. Like black folks still live in multi-generational homes. We have a different sense of family and community, I think, um, by our unique experience in this country. So yeah, I can see that. I, so I'm, I'm loving talking to you about this, Miss Sandy, because I, um, don't have kids, won't have kids. Like, you know, that time has passed for me and I, but I did want to for a long time, Mm -hmm. like in my twenties, well, as a child, of course I wanted to, Mm -hmm. All of my 20s, I dated with the intention of having kids. Right. And so everybody I went out with in my 20s, I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. could you be a good husband? Could right. you be a good father to my kids? <laughs> right, you know? Right. And what will your babies look like? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Precisely. <laughs> and I wish that I had been a little more relaxed and just gotten to know people. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, they they didn't know they were signing up to go right. to like a life partner yeah, yeah. test. Right. Mm-hmm. And then in my 30s, my attitude started, started to mm-hmm. shift. You know, I kind of figured life out. I started yeah. making some disposable income. You mm-hmm. know, I could travel how mm-hmm. I wanted. And I also started doing work on myself, right. you know, therapy and like unpacking things. Here's what I realized about my motherhood aspirations. I wanted to have this family unit I wanted to marry the man. They say you either marry your father, your father. or who you thought your father should have been, who mm-hmm. you would have desired your father right. to be. So I definitely was looking for this, you know, very professional, ambitious man to be his Claire Huxtable. You know, mm-hmm. I wanted to have that traditional family and be there and cook for my kids and, you know, have this home of stability and security. What I realized is I was trying to right the wrongs of my own childhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's not a reason right. to create that. Exactly. And thank God, because had I found that in my 20s, I for sure would have been divorced Mm -hmm. by my 40s. You know, like I would have. And you know what people say? That's not true, Tiffany. I promise you, I would have made sure my husband got custody of those kids. (laughs) I would have loved my, listen, I would have been there. I would have loved my children. They could come to my house anytime. They would have a key to my house. This is your house. But that day to day, let that Negro get up in the morning (laughs) and pack your lunch Mm, and get you to school. And Because I would have done it for so long. So I, I know motherhood is the hardest job. Um, and so I respect it and honor it. But I have to say, at this age, I don't have any regrets about And at this not age, doing I it. don't have any regrets. Yeah. Which I love hearing. Exactly. Yeah, somebody's 70. You're still, well, and, and the other part of that is um, to, to find a mate at this stage in my life, not a husband, a mm-hmm. mate, um, would be an individual who would have to have had that experience already. Yeah. Right? 
you got your I kids, would hope you so, got Ms. your Sandy. grandkids. <laughs> well, but you know, I, I've met a few who, you know, stayed still stay with their mamas. You know, have oh, never I been see, married okay. and don't have any kids. So I might see a little scared. Met a few that they like. Well, no, I want to have kids. Right. So I still want to have kids. Like, okay, are they? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, and I think uh, to your point, some of my um, realization that everybody isn't the Marian kind. Mm -hmm. I grew up in what I now know was a loving family, but love wasn't expressed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I struggle with expressing mm -hmm. my feelings. Yeah. You know, we work through a lot of that now, but that's something that we have to deal with. Uh, my parents were disciplinarians, mm -hmm. you know, um, they didn't, you know, pick you up and hug you when you fell down. Yeah. You know, um, are, is that, are you bleeding? No. Okay. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Where were you going? You know? Yeah. So, so very different, but yeah, the, the, the other scary part for me, um, as a community activist, I was always terrified that somebody was going to do something to a child that I brought into this world and yes. I had to end up in jail because I'd have to kill him. Yeah. You know? So it's, it, it, is, and it, it is a lifetime commitment. Yeah. You know? it, they don't just go away when they turn 18. You know, yeah. I mean, how many of us are dependent upon our parents, you know, well, in adulthood? And we have yeah. more of that today. Well, a shift happens because mm -hmm. I think my parent is more dependent on me. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, these days. I'm dependent on her, though, in the sense of um, I want her alive yeah. and well yeah. right. and yeah. healthy. Yeah. And I don't know what I would do on this planet without her mm -hmm. so I'm dependent in that way but it, it is interesting when the shift starts to happen and that's another thing about multi-generational households mm -hmm. and our unique experience in this country is there are so many of us um, I think something like 62 percent of all black college graduates send money home to their parents mm -hmm. um, help their parents and that has cut into black wealth by 27 percent mm -hmm. so 27 percent of our wealth is decreased mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to white folks 15 percent of them send money Get home back. and mm -hmm. help out their parents. So mm -hmm. there's something about that and the strain that yeah. you can have sometimes where you're trying to take care of a child right. and a parent, and, a parent. Yeah. and mm -hmm. hold down a career right. and manage a marriage. Absolutely. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how yeah. long were you married before you had your son? Well, we actually had our son before we were married. Okay. All right. Um, how long were y'all together before you had the son? Um about three years. Okay. Yeah. And um those three years, was it like blissful and passionate? <laughs> you know, the whole time, right? I just can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see him. Absolutely. Over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We actually just celebrated our 10 year marriage anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. Our wedding anniversary. Thank you. Uh, just a few weeks ago. But we've been together 15 years, um, but married 10. So Mason had just turned three mm -hmm. uh, when we got married. Yeah. But believe it or not, I did not want children. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, right. I mean, I did not grow up like I can't wait to be right. a mother. Yeah. Right. Um, I was also very, always very career driven. Even when I met David, the first thing I told him mm -hmm. was, you know, I'm focused on my career. Right. I just yeah. graduated yeah. from grad school, <laughs> HBCU grad. You couldn't tell me nothing. Where did you go? Uh, Albany State University. Okay. okay. Right. It's I been a, like a, yeah. a run of HBCU people <laughs> oh, yeah. on this in, show. In this I love it. I'm a <laughs> diehard Golden Ram, too. Okay. Diehard. Um, and so, I mean, I just graduated from grad school, and I mean, you just couldn't tell me anything. You know, I was like, I am career-driven. No man's going to stop me, you know, so you just get on this bandwagon. And uh, he was like, yeah, all right. You know, I got you. Right. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and then... Voila. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here Pregnant. comes baby. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, a complete shock. Um, I Because I just, I, that's not the career. That's not the life that I had envisioned. I was going to be a lawyer with a penthouse and a Range Rover mm -hmm. doing my thing. Like yeah. that, I was not interested at all. Had your wardrobe um, planned. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I had it all planned out. Yeah. All planned out. Um, and it, from being young, I mean, I knew immediately that I was, that's the path I was going on. So to have a surprise like that, I mean, it's a surprise, but not a surprise. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously right. we weren't yeah. preventing it. Yeah. Um, but in, I mean, just in my mind, the plan was the plan, right? Yeah. So, you know, human anatomy wasn't going to stop that. And uh, it surely did. And <laughs> <laughs> so I had like, a, you know, a life decision, like yeah. on the line, what will I do? Because I never thought I'd be in that situation. I had to make that decision. 
um, and obviously made the decision uh, to to be responsible and go forward with it. And um, I felt like I had the right person, mm-hmm. and that just wasn't in the plans for me. Yeah. Uh, and my husband grew up uh, in a two parent household. His grandmother moved in with them when he was young, so he, I mean, they the family dynamic was always with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was. And, and is a, I mean, when I say a tremendous father, uh, even because I'm so busy, I mean, he is Mr. Mom mm. uh, and has no problem doing it. Uh, I mean, just, I mean, absolutely all in. And uh, he wants a football team worth of children. I think that we have, you know, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, you know, still trying to compromise there. Uh, but 10 You're years later. You're open to having another one? I Usually not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm open to if if God goes around this birth control. Yes. Then sure enough. We then will. that baby meant to be here. <laughs> then we will have another. Yeah. yeah. I always tell people with like only, you know, the like single child. I'm like, oh, but they're going to have only child syndrome. Yeah. And one of my uh, friends, their couple, they told me, they said, that's somebody else's problem. That's not our problem. And <laughs> like, that's sure. true. That For is true. Sure. Like, like the parents don't have to deal with that. No, there's yeah. a lot of friends around and cousins. And, you know, yeah. you just got to, you know, you got to make your way. Yeah. yeah, we have to. I mean, you know, it's it's life. It's yeah. life. We we put one here. So right. Done our part. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you said something earlier, Miss Sandy, uh, which I think resonates, of course, with you as a mom, but I think with a lot of people who make that decision and that you were worried about bringing a child in this world and something happening to them. Mm -hmm. I also think that is very specific to black women, you know, because of the trauma. Trauma. Yes, that we have traumatized precisely. Mm -hmm. We have long suffered in watching how this world treats our babies. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that's another thing where you and I are not mothers. Right. But if your son came in here, he is mine. He is right. hers. Exactly. You know, yeah. like yeah. I, if you see a kid anywhere, a black kid anywhere, and it's like, let me hold this child. Absolutely. Let me make sure this child is safe. Like you, where your parents, where your right. mama, you 100%. know? 100%. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and everyone feels the right that they have something to comment on. Like you could be walking and it's cold and somebody say, you need to put a hat on that baby, mm-hmm. you know? And just and in our community. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's a cultural thing. It's a cultural it's thing. A cultural you don't have, you, sure. you're not allowed to say, mind your business. This is like, yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you know? It's like, you know what? Like, Yes, ma'am. It's a good idea. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so there is something, I think, just maternal mm-hmm. about yeah. being a black woman right. um, yeah. in this country. And there is also something very true to black womanhood about the trauma that we suffered. Mm-hmm. So we're going to watch this clip together um, where someone is talking about the uh, trauma of um, motherhood. Let me pull it up. Yeah, I don't think people really recognize or consider the mental well-being of moms. There's no, no, where are the resources? There's no resources. Nobody even wants to discuss how motherhood can impact your mental health. I had a whole conversation on an episode with a therapist with the Sin Therapy, and we had a conversation around how motherhood can affect your mental health. Imagine worrying about someone else all of the time, in addition to the other things that you're trying to juggle. And this is a constant job. And like I told you, just because they become adults, that does not necessarily mean that goes away. That's another level of worry and another level of motherhood at that point, Mm -hmm. but nobody wants to talk about the fact that motherhood has absolutely has an impact on our mental health and our mental well-being. I have PTSD for motherhood and I will shout that from the mountaintops. Yeah, I I mean, I Mm -hmm. spot on. Yes, (laughs) I'm going to ask, like, Mm -hmm. how has motherhood impacted your mental health? Oh, man, that that is I need to find that clip. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, that's that's spot on. (laughs) Um, it reminded me, um, when I, when we first had Mason, uh, and just kind of getting adjusted to going back to work, uh, I remember that the feeling of not being able to think about anything else mm-hmm. I mean, from the time you wake up to the time you wake back up. Yeah. Right? I mean, it was just constant. And I remember that being a thing I had never felt before. Right. Mm-hmm. I know he's in a safe place. But I'm thinking, did he eat everything that his grandmother tried to feed him? Right. right. And that's a worry, right? Yeah. Uh, was the milk too hot or too cold? I mean, just you just constantly think, what are we going to eat for dinner? I never spent so much time <laughs> planning meals. Yeah. You know, I mean, you didn't, because it's just you. You know, yeah. you eat, you don't eat, right. you find it. You know. But yeah. someone else mm-hmm. is depending on you making a decision. Right. And if you don't, it just doesn't happen. 
Mm -hmm. right? And then that person is just affected by it. I remember that being one of the most difficult emotions to figure out. And it's not something that they tell you at the OBGYN. I'm sure that our mothers felt that same feeling. Mm -hmm. And but it's I've never heard that conversation. It's all, you know, they always say it's different. You know, yeah. it's going to be difficult. Yeah. You'll, you'll get through it, you know, and I had a partner. So it was like, y'all are figure it out, you know, but that specific emotion of, and it's still there yeah. of like just constant worry <clears throat> because without your decision, that person goes without mm -hmm. right? that, that is Real. almost all consuming. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have you have to teach yourself, and I'm still doing that, um, how to compartmentalize and be okay. Like just calm yourself down. Yeah. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. Just like they're okay. Mm -hmm. You know, even without that decision, that moment, mm -hmm. you know, they're okay. And um that's that's PTSD all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. There was an article um in the New York Times in September, and they talked about uh, the the headline was ignore your kids more mm -hmm. yeah. and it was pretty much like you know mm -hmm. like helicopter parent. it doesn't right. work right. you know right. and but the truth is if you don't cook your son dinner one night I bet he'll figure out how to eat you know yeah. and so I wonder yep. but I but that's a small thing you're saying I want to first acknowledge the um just the worry that mm -hmm. comes with parenting and I can only talk about parenting and motherhood as a child Right. as someone's child right. and I am a grown woman been taking care of myself for 30 plus years and my mother still wants to know mm -hmm. did you make it did you right. land okay did right. you get home oh, yeah. like if she just randomly Absolutely. calls me and I'm like I'm walking from Whole Foods yep. going back okay well text me when you get in the house mm -hmm. I'm not gonna oh, do yeah. it yep. I was just telling our executive producer sometimes my mom will um text me like hey did you land in Atlanta yet mm -hmm. and I'm like nope the plane crashed you didn't see it you know <laughs> I just say something so because I'm like mom Don't like stop that. I know oh, I'm terrible God. I know I'm my, terrible my mom is Don't gone but I'll never forget working at Georgia Pacific I think my office, no, my office was definitely on the 38th floor because my father wouldn't go up that high. Mm. Um, and my mom called the main number to Georgia Pacific because she heard a report of some tragic thing that happened somewhere in Atlanta. And she just wanted somebody to tell her that I wasn't anywhere near that. Well, she didn't realize I was HR. Right. So, so, so the operator called me and said, Sandy, I got to have your mom on the phone. <laughs> she wants to, you want to talk to her? No, I don't want to talk to her. She's yeah. trying to be anonymous. Let yes. her be you. So. Yeah. But, you know, those are things that, you know, I was 40 something. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. And still trying to figure out ways to. I'm 40 worry. something. Right. Just, trying to figure that but, out. Yeah. But, but the worry for her. Yeah. And, and my mother, as I said, she, she wasn't the. The grab you, hug you, kiss you, I love you kind of mom. Mm -hmm. um, but that worry was yeah. still there and of demonstrated course. in any number of ways, any number of times. Well, you you said something that really strikes me. Um, and how long ago is your mom being gone? How long ago? About did five years. About five years. Mm -hmm. So my mother prayerfully and I'm blessed to say is still with me. Mm -hmm. We've had some health scares, but mm -hmm. my mother is doing great. She's fine and here. Um, but I so work like I'm not going to be right when she's yeah. not here. Like right. I'm, I'm bracing myself for that because that's the cycle of life. You mm -hmm. know, we know it we're is. here for a finite amount of time. Right. We have our parents for a finite amount of time. Yeah. And just the thought of being on this earth without her, I can't, my, it does not compute. My mm -hmm. mind cannot imagine it. So I do think um, about people who you don't have kids. So mm -hmm. I'm someone, I don't have children. Right. And then when my mother goes, I will be an orphan. No. So how does the, I will, because I won't have parents and I don't have kids. So the question I ask myself is how does the branch survive without the root or the leaf? When you're just here, it feels like you're floating in oblivion. I don't have another life to live for. Right. So right now I live for my mother. I take care of her. I make sure she's, you know, mm -hmm. everything I can do for her, I do it. And when that goes away, I do question like, oh, well, then what is life like that? I'm not attached. I don't regret the decision about not having kids. Right. But that is a real question <clears throat> that I think we have to ask ourselves. So do you think about that and how have you navigated mm -hmm. that? Um, first of all, I would never consider myself an orphan, mm. even though both my parents are gone and I don't have children. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset. Um, I'm selfish. Mm. Um, I'm going to look out for me. 
Um, I have two, two sisters, one on either side. I'm a middle child. So, you know, one in California, one in New Jersey. Um, they have children. Um, their children have children now. You know, so it's, there's plenty um, mm-hmm. there. Are you an only child? Um, no, I have a brother. Okay, right, right. Uh, yeah, I have have, with my mom, I have an older brother, and my brother has, um, he was my father, um, re, or not remarried, because he wasn't married to my mom, but my father married, and I have two half-brothers, okay. um, and they live um, elsewhere, but in the house where I grew up with my mom, it was me and my brother. My brother has two nephews, mm-hmm. or two sons, two sons my nephews, nephews right. yes, yeah. um, and as the older they've gotten, we've gotten closer. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. now they can text me and call right. me directly. Right. He's not married to their mom right. anymore, mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah, I have and these two. And if your two. mom is in a Around, yeah, they're still going to be around. Yeah, and I hope they take care of their auntie you. and call their auntie. <laughs> they do now, mostly when they need something or yeah. want something, but that's yeah. okay. I don't mind. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. Do your sisters have kids? My sisters have children. My older sister has six. My baby sister has one. Okay. Um, and my older sister allowed me to um, adopt one of her boys. Mm. So he's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, he's the reason I stay on Facebook, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. I, that's how I keep up with what he's doing. He's in San Diego. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just talk with him. He's probably going to head this way before the holidays are out. Nice. Uh, and he has a son who is a mini me. I mean, they just look like twins. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. You told your sister. You did. You yeah. debelled your sister with her kids. Yeah, yeah, it's just like yeah. he both ours. Yeah. But mm-hmm. he stay at my right. house. <laughs> he, he, calls, he calls me mom. You know. He no, does. I don't, want him, I don't want him to stay at my house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He calls you mom and his he mom. Calls, mom. We're both I love mom. that. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. that. So. Did you literally adopt him, or are you just saying no, you no, adopted? No, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. just, you know, just yes. Just, just, he's mine. So. Yes, he yeah. is yours because right. you deemed it so. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And that is the best part of motherhood. Oh, like yeah, you got the absolutely. best of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't. And I don't have to deal with the PTSD. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Now, That's a good point. what about those days where it was a long day at the mayor's office? Oh, well, that's every day. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So every day it's a long day at the mayor's office. You are exhausted, and your husband helps out, but you have to come home, and you got to figure out new math. You know, you got to get on a. a PTA call, maybe you're doing a Jack and Jill meeting, you, you know, all yeah. the things that happen. Are there days where you're like, damn, like this is a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, many of those days. Yeah. <laughs> many, many, many of those days. But as challenging as it is, I try to to think of it as, you know, my career uh, should not intentionally take away from my son's life's experiences. Mm -hmm. It happens unintentionally because I just can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is a sacrifice Mm -hmm. uh, that he is making without having to have a choice in that sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, So I think about how long will I do this? I started when he was six. Mm -hmm. He had just turned six. So most of the life that he will remember thus far, <laughs> he's been in this <laughs> mm-hmm. with me yeah. from being on the city council to to being mayor. Um, and he didn't have a choice. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, and he doesn't have a choice every day. He carries our name. Mm-hmm. So he can't do things that other kids do. Uh, he wants to go to a school in another district and he can't. Yeah, He, he just can't. Um, he wants to. So there's things he can't do and he doesn't understand you know, he sees other kids transfer. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's simple. Just fill out the paperwork. <laughs> you know? I'm like, yeah, they might know yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we, we don't do live that. there. Right. Um, so, yeah, so it's, so with that in mind, that I know, um, you know, I am unintentionally taking things, quote unquote, away from him because of this role. I try as much as I can to be thoughtful about the things that, um, that I can give him mm-hmm. um, as a, trade-off, I guess, for the life he didn't ask for. Mm -hmm. Um, And hoping that this experience um, that we all are going through as a family with me being elected, that he gets something out of it that he can use later on, you know, rather he's a politician or not, Um, that he can use the experiences, the opportunities, the people that we meet uh, to, that that it lands somewhere with him. Mm -hmm. Um, and and hopefully he'll forgive me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> for for some of the restraints he has. I mean, today. that's the thing. My, mm-hmm. my friend uh, Rachel told me this, and it just changed my whole life on how I saw motherhood. 
Um, but she says an amazing mom. She has three kids. And she said to me one day, like, you know, these kids, you do your best. You do the best you can. And whatever you've done for them, it could be the best thing or the worst thing. Right. Like, you just don't know. You just don't but know. But you do your best. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's true. Like, my mom did the best for me, you know? Right. And as, as wonderful mom as you can be, still 10, 20 years now, this boy's still going to be on a therapist couch, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, my yep. mom gave me so much confidence, and now mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out. Like, it's yeah. nothing, right. you know? I know. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. There's, we all have to work out our stuff. There's mm-hmm. no barometer at all. Yeah. Um, even my mom. I have twin brother. Um, who doesn't have children. You're a twin. I'm a twin. Oh, wow. I'm a twin. Um, he Ooh, doesn't have girl, children. What if you had twins? <laughs> but this next one might be twins. So, that's a story. <laughs> yes. um, my husband's father is a twin. Oh. Mm, yeah. Both sides. Uh, when yeah. I see you again, you're like, girl, and I'm a mother of three. I was, <laughs> I was so terrified. <laughs> I was so terrified with Terry Mason. I was like, God, please don't do that oh, to my, me. my wife and Rachel, please. who I talked about, she has a set of twins. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, that's man. how she got the three. Yeah. So my mom says that, you know, having a boy and a girl twin go from no children to one of each was the best thing that ever could happen to her. Mm-hmm. She's like, it was one and done. Mm-hmm. Right? She's like, so you only had one, so you're going to be tortured. <laughs> yeah. You could actually have more than more than twins. You can have triplets. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could just, because you didn't get it out the way. Right. So I was like, well, you know, I kind of didn't control that part. But um, yeah, she was like, you're going to have twins. Don't worry about it. So okay. I'm terrified. My brother doesn't want children, though. Oh, wow. Okay. So I guess I'm the only one that could give her more grandchildren. Yes. Mm. So she's hoping that twins or more arrive yeah. someday. Well, yeah. you, you have time. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, that God's got to go around that birth control, which well, he can do. Yeah, I'm not listen, challenging. Right. Yes. Lord, I'm not challenging. Yes. Okay, say that You're again. obedient to your will, God. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, speaking of, Madam Mayor, um, speaking of making these twins... <laughs> I mean, because everybody's saying kids, it's like, ooh, it take it out of you. And some people, um, I I feel like when it impacts your sex life in your marriage, people are like, I'm tired. Like, I have nothing to give. How do you keep, with respect, however much you want to share, obviously, we sorry to your husband who probably looking at you like, baby, I know you ain't went on there and told (laughs) all our business. He's like, ooh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I want to hear that answer. (laughs) How do you keep your marriage a priority, you know, with holding a full-time career yeah. and raising a kid and like not just your marriage, but like the romance in your marriage and not just the love in your marriage, but the like in your marriage yeah. and just checking in with each other. How do you navigate that? So he does a much better job mm-hmm. of keeping the barometer mm-hmm. than I do. Yeah. Um, he is definitely the one that's like, Hey, it's time. Mm-hmm. Shut it down. Yes. Right? Yes. And Although I'm, I know that's got to be frustrating for him, especially because in a traditional role, and again, he grew up with a two-parent household, he watched his mother be everything and still is mm-hmm. to his father. Um, so now he's in a, his own household right. <laughs> where yeah. he doesn't see the same experience right. that, that he watched his, uh, when he was growing up. Um, so he is much better at it. He will um, put his foot down and go, that's enough. Yeah. Right? It's, it's time um you know, you you need to break away from all that. And what's even more surprising to me, but I'm grateful for it, is that he will even say that when it comes to our son. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is wholeheartedly us first, then that kid. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good <laughs> and, for him. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the way it should be. Um, but it's, like I said, I'm, I'm surprised because he's a male, mm-hmm. but grateful that he kind of has that, enough he just yeah he's just yeah. like you know it's us then him yeah <laughs> and and then all that other stuff you got going on so he is much better at it than I am I, I wish that I had enough compartments <laughs> to do it all yeah you need um, a bigger brain but right. yeah I, man but I, even I, I think brain, there's something helpful. seductive about that too maybe like when your husband is like you're my priority he says you know enough it's time to shut it down it's like ooh, daddy I like it when you talk rough to me <laughs> Let me Absolutely. shut this down. Yeah. You know? and it's, it's That's how you get those twins. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I am learning to be more receptive yeah. to it. Because, I mean, as a strong, independent woman, yeah. my first reaction is, mm. you know, right. We can talk about right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got a longer list of things. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I'm learning. Yeah. Um, and we're learning through this mayoral experience, kind of where the limits are. Yeah. Um, you know, what is the absolute, I have to do this, David, I cannot leave this hanging versus, all right, let me, let me put this to the side. 
Um, so it, it is certainly um, him 90% mm-hmm. that keeps that on the forefront for us. Uh, it helps us really stay engaged with each other. Um, yeah. Because I'm, I'm transactional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will go and go. And and um, I was raised by a single parent. Uh, mm-hmm. So she was go, 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 go. And and loved. Um, we did do a lot of hugging and kissing. But mm-hmm. she also was, I mean, we're from Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, she, you know, yeah. just from the street. So she was just like, I love you, but get up. Yeah. Right. You know? yeah. So it was just a very loving household, but very mm-hmm. transactional. So that is that's what I know. Like, yeah. But he, on the other hand, like I said, his mother, his father, his grandparents, um, he has an older brother, you know, so there's just, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, kind of get up and go. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful that we have that. It's balanced, although it's opposite experiences. It certainly helps us balance it. Um, but I have to give him the credit. He's, he's much better. I love at that. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the black dads and the black yeah. husbands out yeah. there who's a leader enough where you can say, yes, I can understand that. And I think it's something, too, for us to get in touch with our own affection with each other. Um, mm-hmm. After growing up in households where love was understood but not yeah. expressed. Yeah. Right. Um, so I love that we're creating these spaces uh, with and, and for each other. I want to um, ask you both this question. I'll start with you because you are uh, a public servant, a politician. Uh, and I, I hate to even give this shine because it's so utterly stupid and ridiculous. But these comments from the right yeah. uh, about if you don't have children, if you're not mm-hmm. married, like you shouldn't be able to vote. Your vote doesn't mm-hmm. count as much and mm-hmm. you're not invested in the future. Mm-hmm. It's so why such you keep a, taking my tax dollars? Right. <laughs> it, that's the other thing. Then don't take my tax right. dollars, yeah. you know? But <laughs> it's such um, a conservative white male perspective. Like mm-hmm. I'm utterly disgusted disgusted that it has taken place on the national stage and yeah. treated like with normalcy. Right. You know, it's treated like this is a regular thing to say. So a politician running like he's a commander in Gilead right. is making mm-hmm. these absurd yeah. comments about um, motherhood. You know, it, it's just bizarre. Do you have any thoughts about, about that 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 talk as a, as a public servant, uh, uh, an elected official, a mother, a wife? What are your thoughts about people who are re- suggest that our civic engagement should be reduced yeah. because we don't have uh, families in, in his mind and what that looks like. Yeah, it's just wild. It's mm-hmm. just absolutely wild. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to put in words mm-hmm. how absurd yeah. that is. Um, it's hard to ask the question. You I know? mean, it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's so just, stupid. It's insane. Yeah. It's just absolutely insane. Yeah. I mean, there's no... I can't think of a government service that is based on things like, <laughs> right. I just can't, I mean, you still need sanitation, right? water, roads, right. lights. You still need to be able to have affordable housing. You yeah. still need to be able to have a strong economy. I mean, I just can't think of government that separates people Based on parenthood, yeah. You know, I mean, it's foolish. It's just, it's just wild. It's, it's just ignorant. absolutely wild. There's, there's no excuse for it. Um, I, I would like to apologize to everyone who has to hear that. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I apologize for subjecting y'all to it because it, it's it so is, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, and it's just, it's not the representation of government. Yeah, right? it's, that's that's the representation of something different. That's a different show. Yes, um, yes. But it, it's not government. And the scary thing is, though, like, I think they're, you know, in what they call the manosphere, yeah. where some of these right wing talking points have penetrated like this tiny sect of black men. Most black men are amazing, wonderful. Y'all have heard about many on this show, yeah. amazing husbands, fathers, uncles, grandfathers, etc. But there is a tiny sect of black men who parrots these talking points yeah. and who say, you know, they traffic in misogyny and sexism and say, well, you're not fulfilling your role as a woman or right. you're, you know, a high value woman who put career over family. It's a really weird weird thing. Um, so it's scary that people are listening to that and repeating yeah. it. Um, and shame on you people who are voting and thinking like some of these folks. And shame on you for parroting those talking points. But Miss Sandy, <laughs> what do you think about that that perspective? Because essentially they're saying you should not have a right to vote. It's not a perspective and it's not something that I want to talk about because oh. it puts it in the air. I want us to stop giving them airtime. On that note, 
I think we have given it too much air time. Yeah, exactly. And right. I'm going to take a directive from Miss Sandy because she, when she said it, she also gave me that look like yeah. it's time to move on. Yeah, no, and I respectfully okay. agree. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes. No, it's, it's, agree. Hard agree. Yeah. Well, I love this conversation. I love the multi-generational perspective from both of you. Miss Sandy, I'm so happy to hear that you're like joyful in life because I feel incredibly joyful. I have no regrets about decisions I made um, about kids and it's just grateful to know that decades from now I'll still feel the same way Absolutely. if you're listening to this and not watching this you cannot tell but Miss Sandy looks so good she got Ooh. these fashionable glasses yes. little pinstripe mm -hmm. suit with her red shoes <laughs> this, is, this is traditional seersucker Awesome. So, yes. Mm -hmm. It looks, it's mm -hmm. very yep. fitting so, and very becoming. Mm -hmm. I love you. it. Thank I you. love it. Southern, very Southern. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And this uh, HBCU love, I love as well. Oh, yes. So, Madam Mayor, I humbly request that you run for Congress ah! um, or consider it. <laughs> consider it. You have a presence about you. Aww. I would like to see this perspective and this face in the federal government. I know you're doing oh, good work you. here in Stonecrest, but... You know, you never know. You can juggle twins and the sun and <laughs> Congress and commuting. You know, you never. Well, because a part of me is like, we do need more black babies raised by people <laughs> like you. So why not? Let's populate. Uh, but really, thank you, ladies, so much. I just um, the last time we did this show, I started out by quoting a movie and I was saying motherhood is a mental illness because um, mm. that's what J-Lo said in the movie mm. Hustler. Okay. And, yeah, 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 right, yeah right, and it's true right, because right. you will like kill yourself to save oh, your yeah. child, you know, like <laughs> without question. So yeah. I just honor and respect moms, um, but I also honor and respect those of you who choose not to be moms. Absolutely. Um, and if you are lucky enough to still have your mom with you, thank her for the work and sacrifice yeah. because biologically she is wired to love you <laughs> and sacrifice herself in your name. Yeah. Um, so thank you all for those perspectives. And listen, if you wanted kids and you didn't have kids and that time has passed you, I hope that you find joy in life. Things happen as they're supposed to. And there's a lot of life left to live and a lot of freedom. Embrace that freedom that uh, being childless may afford you uh, and do something nice for yourself because yeah, every everybody day. can do that every day. Every day. <laughs> Even moms out there, do something yeah. nice for you. You yeah. deserve. Do something nice for yourself. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. We'll be back next week with another episode of Across Generations. And I'm your host, Tiffany Cross. <laughs>